I've been thinking about making this video for years now. But I've always put it off because I've been too ashamed. In truth, I did make a few vids in the past, but whenever I went to upload any of them, I just froze. I felt paralysed. I couldn't do it. I don't even know why, really, but I just couldn't. I guess that makes me a bit of a pussy. But after seeing how many brave young men are coming forward and speaking their truth with so much courage nowadays, I finally feel ready to tell you mine. This isn't going to be an easy video, but I'd like to thank you for all of your bravery. It's only because of guys like you that I finally found the guts to do this. You guys are the true alphas. Don't let anyone ever tell you different. Stay strong, kings. Anyway, here it goes. This is a story, a brutal story, a story about a girl. The reason I pussied out of ever sharing any video I ever made was because every time I went to upload one, it made me feel sick, like physically ill. Even now, the thought leaves a bad taste in my mouth, all because it painfully reminds me of exactly how I felt when I went to meet this girl, Sarah. We were both 15 years old. We've been talking online for weeks, no, months, mostly in DMs, but back in those days, everyone used this thing called MSN Messenger, which was like a chat box, I guess, but not part of any app or anything like that. It was its own thing, you know, a messenger, basically. Anyway, uh, long story short, we eventually arranged to meet. She lived in a town or two over, roughly half an hour away, if you went by train. Not far, really, but far enough that we didn't know the same people. None of the same people, actually. And I think that's what she liked about me, if I'm being honest. I also think that's why she told me we were going to have sex. That's what she said, not me. She said we were going to lose our virginity together. Get it out of the way and then just see what happens, I guess. Naturally, I agreed, without even knowing what she looked like. So anyway, the big day comes around and off I pop to the station, all horny, nervous. In truth, I was shitting myself. I got there 20 minutes early. The next time I checked the time, she was 20 minutes late. So I wait, and I wait, and I wait. I even bought her some chocolates, a bag of revels, just like these. But of course, as I'm sure many of you have already guessed, she never turned up. It was 
It was so humiliating. I don't think I've ever been so embarrassed in all of my life. An hour went by, then two. I told myself I wouldn't lie. I waited there for three and a half fucking hours before finally giving up. During that whole time, I got no texts and no calls. I tried calling and texting myself, of course, but nothing. Back then, you didn't even know if you'd been left on red or anything like that. So I was clueless. I'd been ghosted before getting ghosted was even a fucking thing. Maybe she had a good reason, I kept telling myself. Something awful could have happened. You never know, right? I remember I even took the chocolates home with me, thinking that I'd save them for her anyway. Because, well, I'm just a nice guy, I guess. Even after she was a no-show, I still wanted her to eat the chocolates I got for her. She once made a joke, you see, about how... about how she could never imagine sex being better than chocolate. In truth, this made me a little bit worried that she was going to be a big girl, you know? But honestly, even if she was a proper fatty, I was still going to have sex with her anyway, because like I said, I'm a nice guy. I even... I even wanked over some plus-size models for, like, two weeks straight just to make sure that I could get it up for her. So even if she was a proper, proper pig, or even fucking ugly, I could still give her what she wanted. I had this, uh, this little fantasy, too. You know when people smoke a cigarette after sex in the movies and all that? Yeah. Instead of that, I was going to feed her the chocolates right into her chubby little mouth. And then I'd ask her, so, which is better? But not like in a serious way, more of a jokey kind of thing, you know? A joke between us. Our joke. That was the idea, anyway. But she never turned up. The only glimpse I got of her that day at the station was the fat, empty space in which she should have been standing. A few days later, or maybe a day. I can't remember really. I mean, this was 23 years ago now. Fuck, 23 years. Yeah, well, I don't know. I was sad, all right? And there was nothing in the fridge. So I ripped open the bag of fucking revels, thinking that by eating them, I could just move on and forget all about what had happened. Guess what happens next? About halfway through the bag, I get a text. She tells me she's sorry, that she feels real bad about leaving me in the lurch like that, about fucking ghosting me and never saying a word. And stupidly, Instead of just ignoring her like she did me, I asked her if anything had happened. And then she told me. She told me the reason she didn't turn up 
was because the night before she went to a party. I know a lot of you guys already know exactly where this is headed, don't you? But like a naive fool, I asked, did something happen? She said there was this guy, a guy a few years older than us, a guy who used to go to her school. Man, I knew this part would make me feel sick. Anyway, she said they didn't speak much at the beginning, but there were so many people there and she drank too much and smoked a bit of weed and she'd never smoked weed before. And before she knew it, a lot of the people were gone and all of her friends had left. And the only person still there was this guy. It was too late for her to go home on her own. So she decided to stay with this guy and her and this guy inside a stinking living room with booze and beer can fucking ashtrays scattered about everywhere. This guy raw doctor on the sofa. Yeah. He fucked her brains inside out on a sofa soaked through with spilled beer that rinsed into her clothes because he fucked her from behind riding up against the fucking armrest. I don't mean to be so graphic. I'm just telling you what she told me. I thought she was rubbing it in just to be a bitch, but the second after telling me she'd been fucked by some other dude, she was then telling me how now she was really worried that she might be pregnant. So she was trying to get sympathy from me after fucking me over like that. And at that moment, that very moment, I bit into a coffee-flavoured revel. And at that time, the only revel I didn't like was the fucking coffee one. I hated them, actually. But I was so depressed at the time, I just didn't care. <laughs> and that's when she told me. She told me, she let him come, balls deep inside her, right as the disgusting flavour of coffee hit my mouth. Honestly, though, it tasted different. I swear, it was like extra bitter, kind of like warm beer. And in that moment, in that moment, it tasted as if the guy was shooting his semen right into the back of my throat. And that is when I puked. Like projectile fucking vomited, you know. I didn't even know I was capable of doing that or that it was even possible in general back then. I thought it was one of those myths that you hear about but never actually see or maybe in a weird video or whatever but yeah that's what I did I threw up all over my brand new laptop the same fucking laptop I'd spent week no months talking to this girl every day since getting it for my 15th birthday <laughs> I remember even joking in a few messages I sent her about how I was going to destroy her <laughs> when we met. 
the only thing I ended up destroying was my own shiny new laptop from a premature ejaculation that shot out of my very own mouth. It never worked the same after that. The keys would stick, and no matter how many times I cleaned it, I could never get rid of that stench. The smell of vomit would just follow me, always be on my fingertips, you know. But it was never vomit to me. Not really. It was cum. Genetically superior cum. So instead of losing my virginity, I lost my laptop and every last shred of my hope. Everything after that was tainted. Tainted by the stench of another man's superior load. I don't know if he impregnated her or not in the end, but sometimes, in my worst moments, I really, really fucking hope that he did. I hope that he ruined her life like she ruined mine. But yeah, I just couldn't face speaking to her after that. So, I just don't know. I've never told anyone this story before, except for my dad. And you know what he said to me after I told him? Don't worry about it, son. So what if the only pussy you ever destroyed is still only your mother's? And my dad, my dad was right, you know. Even now, the only time I've ever got my penis wet was when I wet the bed at five years old. Think about it for a second. There's newborn babies born every minute of every single day with more recent experience than me. <laughs> anyway... After Sarah done me dirty like that, I've just never been able to talk to girls. Sometimes even the thought alone is enough to make me feel sick, you know? Like a lot of guys today, I just withdrew from everything and started playing video games instead. But my fucking PlayStation broke. So I had to settle for my dusty old Super Nintendo for a while. I'd never completed Super Mario World. And I thought, you know what? Why not? Now's the time. At least that's a goal I can probably accomplish. And it genuinely made me happy. Right until the final moment. Where Mario saves the kingdom. And the princess floats down from nowhere and gives him a fucking blowjob. That's when I realised, man, that this whole twisted world is just one big fucking lie. I'd had the wall pulled over my eyes ever since the day I was born. From day dot, I'd been brainwashed by fairy tales into thinking that one day I'll find my blowjob queen and we'll live happily ever suck job after. I'd been taught that even if I was a guy just like Mario, a short, tubby fucking sub five plumber with a paedophile's mustache, if I do the right thing and be the nice guy, one day I'll get to smash a hot virgin princess. When in the real world, She's already been ploughed by older, taller versions of even myself already, which she loved a hell of a lot more, by the way. And the only time guys like me might get a taste is when Alpha Chad has already got her pregnant and she needs a chump 
to help her raise another man's better, superior kid. Just like the girl from my own story. I've never had a girlfriend. I'm currently 25 years old, and I've never had a girlfriend. Last night, my mom was crying because, yeah, like the title of this video says, I'm 26 years old now, and I've never had a girlfriend. And I've never had a girlfriend. I've never been close with a girl. So I'm a 26-year-old, and I've never had a girlfriend in my entire life. And she was alone with this genetically superior male for just a few days and he fucked her brains out never kissed a girl on the lips before which of course means I'm a fucking virgin uh, I walked up to a girl once and said hey she said ew and walked away nobody nobody cares about you in this world do you know how much misery you've caused me I'm such a nice guy why won't you give me a chance A wise man once said that there are two types of loneliness. One of them gets you laid, the other does not. <laughs>